Hi class, in this video we will discuss sums from midpoint theorem exercise 11 and medical 1. We have already discussed midpoint theorem which just a recap. In a triangle ABC if E and F are midpoints of two sides AB and AC then we can say that EF is parallel to BC and EF is half of BC. The converse of the theorem was in a triangle ABC if E is the midpoint of AB and EF is parallel to BC then F will be the midpoint of AC. And there was one more theorem on intercept which says if a transversal makes equal intercept on three or more parallel lines. See the transversal is L. There are three parallel lines PQR. AB equals to BC. Then any other transversal if you draw it will also make equal intercept. Let us look at sum number two. Prove that the four triangles formed by joining in pairs the midpoint of the sides of the triangle are congruent to each other. Let us just draw the diagram first. Look carefully. Suppose we have a triangle A, B, C. E is the midpoint of A, B. F is the midpoint of A, C. And G is the midpoint of B, C. Then we need to join it. C. You get four triangles, isn't it? We need to prove that these four triangles are congruent. What is given to us? Always, it's essential to write what is given. Given is E, F, and G are midpoints of A, B, A, C, and B, C respectively, isn't it? And required to prove is triangle A, E, F. Congruent to triangle EBG, EBG, congruent to triangle EFG, congruent to triangle FGC. All the triangles are congruent to each other. Look carefully. Look at E and F are midpoints of AB and AC, isn't it? Which means by midpoint theorem, EF is parallel to BC by midpoint theorem. Which means EF is parallel to BG. Any doubt? Now look carefully. Similarly, this suppose is 1. F and G, F and G are midpoints of AC and BC respectively which means FG FG is parallel to AB which means can I write FG parallel to BE look carefully now from 1 and 2 look at this quadrilateral BGFE in quadrilateral BEFG you know we got BE parallel to FG and we got EF parallel to BG which implies BEFG is a parallelogram, isn't it? And in a parallelogram, we know that the diagonal bisect the parallelogram into two congruent triangle which means triangle B E G B E G is congruent to triangle F G E F G E. So these two triangles are congruent, isn't it? Similarly, similarly, can you prove that G E F C G E F C is a parallelogram? We can prove. Same manner, which means triangle GEF or FGE, whatever FGE is congruent to triangle GFC. GFC, why? Because the diagonal bisects the parallelogram into two congruent. Triangles, we know this. 
one more time similarly we can say just look over here we can do like this okay in the exam also similarly we can say e a f g e a f g is a parallelogram isn't it it's a parallelogram where again triangle f g e triangle f g e will be congruent to triangle a e f a e f reason is same the diagonal bisects the parallelogram into two congruent triangle now look at look at this this and this okay comparing suppose this is 3 this is 4 this is 5 so we can say comparing 3 4 and 5 we can say that the four triangles are congruent to each other four triangles are congruent to each other to each other clear now let us look at the next sum now look at sum number 4 which says the diagonal ac and bd of a parallelogram abcd intersect at o if p is the midpoint of ad prove that po is parallel to ab and po is half of cd let us first draw a parallelogram let us first draw suppose a b c d whose diagonal bisect at o and p is the midpoint of ad already given to us okay we have to prove that po is parallel to ab and po is half of cd very easy look over here look at triangle abd in triangle abd p is the midpoint of ad no doubt okay given o is the midpoint of db we know in a parallelogram the diagonal bisect each other at the point of intersection okay which means by midpoint theorem can i say po parallel to ab and po is half of ab how can i say by midpoint theorem i can say that now look carefully in a parallelogram we know ab and dc will be equal opposite sides are equal to each other so i can write po equals to half instead of ab can i write cd proof clear now let us look at the next sum now look at sum number 5 which says in the adjoining figure abcd is a quadrilateral in which p q r s are the midpoint of the sides you know respectively ac is the diagonal show that sr is parallel to ac sr is half of ac pq is equal to sr and pq rs is a parallelogram look carefully first look in triangle acd acd s and r are mid points of ad and dc respectively which means by mid point theorem can i write sr parallel to ac and sr is equal to half of ac by mid point theorem now look at triangle abc in triangle abc we know p and q are mid points of ab and bc respectively effectively isn't it okay which means can i write by midpoint theorem pq equals to half of ac and pq equals to pq rather is parallel to ac now look carefully compare one and two from one and two we can easily say that sr and pq Are same, PQ equals to SR. 
and we know in a quadrilateral if the opposite sides are equal and parallel then it is a parallelogram in the quadrilateral pqrs pq is equal to rs and pq is parallel to rs why because pq is parallel to ac and sr is parallel to ac which is pq and sr will be parallel to each other isn't it which implies pq rs is a parallelogram clear now let us look at the next sum now look at sum number 6 very easy show that the quadrilateral formed by joining the midpoints of the adjacent side of a square is also a square which means suppose abcd is a square where the midpoints of ab is f bc is g cd is h and ga is e when we join the midpoint that is also a square we need to prove easy look at the triangle in triangle A C D, A C D. We know E and H are midpoints of A D and C D, A D and C D, which means E H will be parallel to A C, and E H will be half of A C. Why? By midpoint theorem. Done. Okay. Now, if you look at triangle ABC, similarly, 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 in triangle ABC, we can say FG is parallel to AC, and FG is equal to half of AC. Why? By midpoint theorem. Okay. Similarly, A B D in triangle A B D. If you look, right? F and E are the midpoints of A B and A D respectively. Which means we can say that E F is parallel to B D, and E F is equal to half of B D by midpoint here okay then look at triangle dbc in triangle dbc we can say same g and h are the midpoint of bc and cd respectively which means gh is parallel to bd and gh is half of bd Am I clear? Now look at these two. E H is parallel to A C, and F G is parallel to A C. Look at this one and this one. Combining, we can say that, or comparing, we can say that E H is parallel to E H is parallel to F G, isn't it? And E H Is equal to F G is equal to half A C. So opposite sides are equal and they are parallel. Okay. Similarly, if you compare these two, it was midpoint theorem over here. If you compare these two, we can say that E F E F is parallel to G H and E F equals to G H equals to Half of BD. Am I clear? Now look carefully. AC and BD are of same length. Why? Because they are diagonal of the square. The diagonal of the square are equal. Which means, comparing this. Suppose this is number one. This is number two. So comparing one and two, can I write? EH. Is equal to F G is equal to E F is equal to G H. Why? Because B D is equal to A C. So the adjacent sides are equal, and the opposite sides are parallel. Which means, can I write E F G H is a parallelogram? 
why because eh is parallel to fg and ef is parallel to gh and adjacent sides are equal also so it can be a rhombus it can be a square also how do you prove it's a square very simple look at this if we can prove that one of the angle any one of the angle okay is 90 degree then it has to be a square see from these two cases it can be a rhombus or a square isn't it if you prove that this is 90 it's a square look how look at I'll, I'll name it as O suppose this is P and this is Q okay look at O P H Q O P H Q we know E H is parallel to A C A C which means the portion of E H Q H will be parallel to O P no doubt in that In the same manner, if you look, uh, GH is parallel to BD, isn't it? GH is parallel to BD. Just look carefully. So we can say GH is parallel to BD. So we can say HP parallel to Q. HP parallel to Q which means opposite sides are parallel to each other which means o p h q is a parallelogram now look carefully we know this angle is 90 why because we know in a square the diagonal bisect each other at 90 degree and these two angles are opposite angle of a parallelogram which will be equal so if this is 90 this has to be 90 okay our work is done which means can I write look carefully angle Q O P angle Q O P is equal to 90 degree why because diagonal of a square bisect each other at 90 degree we know this so if this is 90 this has to be 90 opposite angle of a parallelogram are equal which implies angle QHP QHP is equal to angle QOP is equal to 90 opposite angle of parallelogram they are equal and once we are able to prove that QHP is 90 it means that EFGH is a square which implies EFGH is a square nice sum am I clear now let us look at the next sum now look at sum number 7 which says in the adjoining figure AD and BE are medians of triangle ABC if DF is parallel to BE prove that CF equals to one fourth of AC what is given I've written and what is required to prove I've written. Just look over here. If you look at triangle B, C, E. In triangle B, C, E. Look carefully. D is the midpoint of B, C given. Because A, D is the median. A, D is the median. Am I correct or not? And DF is parallel to B. So by converse theorem, we can say that F is the midpoint of EC, which implies F is the midpoint of CE. Why? By converse midpoint theorem. 
Am I clear? Which means CF equals to FE. Now look carefully. Can I write CF equals to instead of FE? Can I write half of C? Half of C. Why? Because F is the midpoint. Okay? Which implies we can say Fe is equal to half of C. Done. Now look carefully. Cf equals to half. Now Ce. Can I write Ce as half of AC? Why? Because E is the midpoint. E is the midpoint of AC. Which means... AE is equal to EC is equal to half of AC which means CF will be one fourth of AC and that's proved clear now let us look at the next sum now look at sum number 8 in the adjoining figure ABCD is a parallelogram E and F are the midpoints of the side AB and CD respectively the straight line AF and BF meets the straight line ED and EC in the point G and H respectively. We need to first prove that triangle HEB, matlab this triangle and triangle HCF are congruent to each other. And then we need to prove that GEHF, GEHF, this one, is a parallelogram. Very easy. First of all, look. Can I say AB equals to CD? Opposite side of a parallelogram I can say that which means DF is equal to FC is equal to AE is equal to EB why because F and E are midpoints of DC and AB respectively they have given that now look any triangle HEB H E B and triangle H C F first of all we just now prove that E B is equal to F C done then if you look this angle and this angle will be equal alternate angle so can I say H E B is equal to angle H C F alternate angle. Similarly, can I say this angle and this angle are equal alternate because these, these two are parallel lines. We know that. We can also say angle H B E is equal to angle H C F Y alternate angle which means look over here which means triangle HEB is congruent to triangle HCF and the reason is angle side angle done the first part is done now look at the second part they have told prove that GEHF is a parallelogram now look carefully a E C F quadrilateral A E C F A E is equal to C F we know that and A E is parallel to C F which means A E C F is a parallelogram no doubt in that A E C F is a parallelogram which means A F is parallel to EC which means the portion of AF can we write GF is parallel to EH portion of EC so we prove that this is parallel to this now similarly look at DEBF quadrilateral DEBF if you look carefully same way EB 
is equal to df and eb is parallel to df which means debf is a parallelogram no doubt in that if one of the opposite sides are equal and parallel then it's a parallelogram which means de can i write the portion g e see first of all we have to write de if it's a parallelogram de is parallel to fb no doubt in that now de i'm writing ge is parallel to instead of fb can i write fh definitely i can write this which means this is parallel to this so from this one and two the conclusion is from one and two what we can say we can say that g e h f is a parallelogram proved done now let us see the next sum now look at this sum very interesting number 9 they have not given the diagram i have drawn it okay abc is an isosceles triangle with ab is equal to ac d e f are the midpoints of bc ab and ac respectively prove that ad is perpendicular on ef and is bisected by it look we need to prove that ad and ef are perpendicular to each other and ao is equal to od bisected which means we need to prove that ao is equal to od look at first look at triangle abd and triangle acd abd and acd of course angle abd is equal to angle acd y base angle of an isosceles triangle or you can say that since ab was equal to ac so the angle opposite to them will be equal second if you see ab was given equal to ac ab was given equal to ac and one thing more bd is equal to cd why because d is the midpoint d is the midpoint this was given to us okay which means triangle abd is congruent to triangle acd now if they are congruent then these two angles will be equal cpct which means angle adb is equal to angle adc is equal to x suppose let cpct so i have taken this as x now look carefully x plus x is 180 linear pair which means 2x is 180 or your x is 90 degree which means this is 90 degree am i clear now look carefully e and f are midpoints of ab and ac respectively which means by midpoint theorem ef will be half of bc and ef will be parallel to bc by midpoint theorem so these two lines are parallel now look in quadrilateral bdoe bdoe Now, these two lines are parallel bd is parallel to eo and if this is 90 then this will be also 90 coincident angle they add up to give 180 suppose i take this as y take this as x so x plus y equals to 180 that's coincident angle which means y equals to 90 because x is 90 we know once y is 90 it simply means that ad is perpendicular to ef then am i clear now look we need to prove that and is bisected by it which means ao equals to od look how i'll prove this the last portion look k 
can you see the triangle a b d in triangle a b d we know e is the midpoint of a b no doubt e o is parallel to b d no doubt in that why because e f we already know is parallel to b c so by converse theorem we know that o will be the midpoint of ad which means o is the midpoint of ad how by converse midpoint theorem am i clear now if o is the midpoint it simply means ao is equal to od which means ad is perpendicular to ef and is bisected by it isn't it now let us look at the next sum now look at sum number 10a in the quadrilateral given below ab is parallel to dc e and f are the midpoints of ad and bd respectively which means de and ea will be same df and fd will be fb will be same okay prove that g is the midpoint of bc and eg equals to half of ab plus dc very easy first look at triangle abd in triangle abd if you look e and f are midpoints of ad and db respectively which means by midpoint theorem can i write ef parallel to ab and ef equals to half of ab i can write this by midpoint theorem done now look carefully in bcd in triangle pcd f is the midpoint of bd already given and look if we can write fg parallel to dc fg is parallel to dc why because we have already proved ef is parallel to ef is parallel to ab and ab is parallel to dc which means ef is parallel to dc and fg is nothing but the extension of ef which means we can say fg is also parallel to dc can i say like this now look carefully so this is the midpoint these two are parallel which means by converse theorem we prove that g is the midpoint which implies g is the midpoint of bc why by converse of midpoint theorem done now and if g is the midpoint then we can say f and g are midpoints of uh db and bc respectively which means by midpoint theorem now can i write fg equals to half of dc i can write this by midpoint theorem we know this suppose this is number 3 now you add number 2 and 3 adding 2 and 3 what do you get ef plus fg equals to half of ab plus half of bc ef plus fg is nothing but eg so eg equals to half of ab plus dc proved clear now look at the next sum you look at 11b very interesting in the figure given below abc is a kite in which bc is equal to cd ab is equal to ad efg are midpoints of cd bc and ab respectively you need to prove that efg is 90 which means this angle is 
and the line through G, if you draw a line through G and parallel to FE, parallel to FE, bisects AD. So if you draw a line through G parallel to EF, which means this and this are parallel to each other, it should bisect DA. Suppose, suppose this is M. So AM should be equal to MD. First of all, I'll draw the diagonal. Look carefully. Okay, I'll name it as P Q. This is R. I need to prove that P Q F R is a parallelogram. My work is done because we know this angle is ninety degree. In kite, the angle between the two diagonal is ninety degree, which means angle C P B equals to 90 degree, we already know. You know, diagonal intersect at 90 degree. So if I prove that this is a parallelogram, then this angle and this angle will be equal. So our work is done. Now look carefully. In triangle C, D, B. C, D, B. E and F are midpoints of C, D and B, C, which means E, F will be half of D, B. And look carefully, E, F will be parallel to D, B, which means E, F, the portion of E, F, R, F, and D, B, the portion of D, B, we can write P, Q. So I just proved that this and this are parallel to each other. Similarly, if you look at triangle ABC, in triangle ABC, if you look now carefully, F and G, F and G are the midpoints of PC and AB respectively, isn't it? Which means, can I write FG is parallel to AC and FG is half of AC. Now FG, FQ is a portion of FG, so which means FQ will be parallel to RP. This is your 1, this is your 2. So from 1 and 2, from 1 and Two, I can say that PQFR is a parallelogram, which means this angle and this angle will be equal, opposite angle. RFQ is equal to RPQ equals to 90 degree, opposite angles of a parallelogram. They are equal, which means RF. Q is nothing but E F G. Look carefully. Proved. So the first part is done. Am I clear? Now look at the second part. In the second part, they have told us to prove that the line through G parallel to F E bisects D A. Bisects D. Very easy. Look carefully. We know G is the midpoint. In triangle ABD, look carefully. ABD. G is the midpoint of AB, no doubt. And MG, look carefully. MG is parallel to EF. This was given to us. And EF is parallel to BD. We just proved it, okay? Which means MG is parallel to DB. Am I clear? Which means by converse of midpoint theorem, I can say M is the midpoint of AD. Which implies M is the midpoint of AD. Why? By converse of midpoint theorem. That is what we were supposed to prove. That is 
AM equals to MD. Root. Clear? Now let us see the next sum. Now look at the last sum. Sum number 2. In the joining figure, line L, M, N are parallel to each other and G is the midpoint of CD. That means CD is bisected. Okay? Calculate BG. B, G. If AD is 6. If AD is 6. Very easy. Look carefully. BG is parallel to AD. And G is the midpoint of CD. Which implies by converse theorem. B is the midpoint of AC. By converse midpoint theorem. Which means now B and G are the midpoint of AC and CD. Which means we can say BG is equal to half of AD. Which means BG is equal to half of 6. That's 3. Done. Now they have asked CF. CF. If GE is 2.3. Same manner. See. Uh, G is the midpoint of CD and GE parallel to CF which means I can write by converse theorem E is the midpoint of FD can I write that and when E is the midpoint now by this is by converse midpoint theorem so midpoint theorem said if G and E are the midpoints then GE will be half of CF by midpoint theorem, isn't it? A G is 2.3. So 2.3 equals to half of CF. So CF will be 4.6. Done. Number 3, let us see. Again, okay. AB. Find AB. If BC is 2.4. Now we know the intercept theorem. CD is bisected by these three parallel lines. Which means AC will be also bisected. AB is equal to BC. Why? Because CG is equal to GD. By intercept theorem. Isn't it? Which means AB will be equal to 2.4 centimeter. Done. Okay. The last portion. ED. ED. If F D equals to 4.4. Same intercept theorem. See? F F B is 4.4 centimeter. Which means E F will be equal to E D will be equal to F D by 2. Why? By intercept theorem. By intercept theorem. Isn't it? Which means E F will be equal to E D will be equal to 4. Point 4 by 2, that's 2.2 centimeter. Am I clear? So this was the last sum. Keep it till here. In the next video, we'll see some other chapter. Till then, take care.